Hi, and welcome to another Google Hangout. My name is Alex Harris, and I'm a web designer that's focused on conversion optimization, landing pages, and A-B testing. Today we're going to be talking all about conversion conferences. Actually, this week coming up is the conversion conference in Chicago. And hi to my conversion friends out there. Unfortunately, I couldn't be there. But I love going to conferences, and I'm happy to have Michael Agard here today, who just came back for a couple of conferences all focused on conversion. How you doing, Michael? Very good, Alex. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, Michael, why don't you tell the audience a little bit about yourself and uh, where you live and everything. Well, uh, I'm based out of uh, Copenhagen, Denmark. I'm uh, Danish, and I work with uh, conversion rate optimization. I've been doing that for a long, or I guess in this business, a long time, about five years. Uh, I spent a lot of that time focusing on... Uh, on, the, on copywriting, copy that converts, and uh, yeah, it's kind of my, my whole learning curve has just, just it's been a learning by doing experience. Uh, there wasn't that much uh, useful material back back when I started, so a lot of what I've been doing is uh, learning by doing. So I've made so many ridiculous mistakes you won't believe it. Uh, also with split testing, and uh, uh, it's, it's, it's a learning curve, but I think that uh, you know your own mistakes are some of the best things to learn from, and. Uh, you know that's what I think is one of the cool things about going to different conferences and hanging out with really talented people is that you know most of the time what we talk about is actually how, how we used to <laughs> you know really screw it all up and what we learn from it and how we're getting better. So yeah, that's 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 kind of been the process. Uh, I, I I've been self-employed for about four four years now and. Yeah, I, got, I, I have my blog, Content Verve, uh, and uh, I do a lot of speaking all over the world, and I recently joined up with an agency here in Denmark called uh, AdCore. Yep. Awesome. Yeah, it, it, it's great to chat with people who've, who've been doing this for a while and have been in the outs of, of, of the trenches and really actually apply a lot of the stuff because... You know, there's there's not a lot of really tricks to conversion. It's it's that grind, going in there, finding data, and trying to really understand and get in the customer's shoes to figure out what their potential opportunities are. Yep, definitely. And um, at the conferences that you just went to, uh, you just got back from Digital Elite Camp, was put together by Pep Laya. Why don't you give us a little bit of overview of how that conference went? Well, I gotta say that Elite Camp is one of my favorite uh, conferences in the world. I mean, it's just it's, it's just awesome. I, I spoke there last year also. Um, last year was only Estonian uh, attendees, and we were I think three international speakers: uh, John Ekman from Sweden, Craig Sullivan from UK, and and myself. Uh, and and this year it was it was pretty much all international speakers. There were a couple from Estonia, including Pep, but he's he's international. So it was uh, it was a great lineup, man. There were so many interesting people, and and the. Uh, the attendees there, uh, like half half of them were foreigners and half were Estonians, and mm -hmm. the level was really high. So, uh, so just uh, just talking to different attendees, I just got a kick out of that. It was really really cool and talking about some of their challenges and stuff. And I mean, the speaker lineup was awesome. There were, I mean, Craig Sullivan was there, uh, Andre Morris, of course, Pep. Um, some of the guys from Online Dialogue, uh, uh, Ton and, and Bart, and just 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 a whole bunch of really cool guys. Judah, uh, John Ekman from Sweden, just just an, a lot of really really high quality, uh, very insightful uh, sessions. And for me, it's always just such a pleasure to get to hang out with such a, a group of just awesome people who, who actually you know appreciate the work I do and understand it because that's rare you know when you hang out with civilians or mere mortals uh, you know a few of them really understand what your job is and if you try to explain it to them they, they pretty much just fall asleep because it sounds so unfair and boring so <laughs> that's, that's one of the reasons why I love speaking at, at events is just to get to hang out and geek out with all these people who can uh, who, yeah who, who actually want to talk about the same stuff that I do <laughs> yeah I, I imagine conversion focused Opportunities have really exploded overseas, you know, compared to America. Uh, give us a little bit of overview of, you know, you know where the opportunity is. Is is it e-commerce, lead generation, you know, small well, businesses like it is in, in the states? Well, it's, it's it's all over the place, I'd say. Um, but again, I mean, so right now, I I, I kind of see a CRO being where SEO was like five years ago. Yeah. Uh, right now, it's kind of the new thing, and all of a sudden, every every you know, every agency has an uh, SEO or, uh, sorry, a CRO expert and everybody's doing it and all of a sudden it's on the menu. So we've been doing uh, search engine optimization for a, for a long time, which of course means that we're experts at, uh, you know, conversion also. That's a natural thing. You know, you don't need any experience. You just need to say you got it. So I think that uh, right now... Uh, 
it's, it's kind of like what happened with SEO, where all of a sudden, you know, all the businesses are scrambling to get it, and they're investing a lot of money, in it, and they're probably using a lot of partners who don't know what they're doing. And they're going to keep doing that for a couple of years, and then the business is going to get more knowledgeable, and they're going to find out what it's all about. And then they're going to, you know, there's going to be a couple of, of agencies left uh, worldwide that are, or not a couple more than that, but there's going to be uh, a lot that are, that are not there anymore because, uh, yeah people find out what it's really about. I think that's what's going to happen. So it's the same thing right now. It's just the, the market is getting is learning and they're understanding that it's, that it's not just about ramming as much traffic as possible into websites, just you know, kind of closing your eyes and hoping for the best. It's actually about finding out how to get those people to do what you want them to do on the website. And, uh, and, and so some companies really understand it and, and invest in it, and some of them are think it's the magic thing and, w and when you talk to them and, and get them to understand it's really a, a long process then uh, yeah so it's, it's, it's far between the ones who are really willing to invest uh, what it takes so there's you got to find a strategy for getting getting in there and making them understand what it's all about and I'm, I mean I've, 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 I've made all the mistakes or no I've got a lot of mistakes to make still but I have made uh, so many mistakes uh, regarding split testing for example A-B testing and uh, I, I mean there's I, my hypothesis is that the other guys who haven't been doing it for as long will do this, make the same mistakes as I am. Uh, mm -hmm. I I used to make and and that kind of you know also makes everything a little bit more difficult. So actually, one of the things that was a big topic on um, uh, at Elite Camp, I talked about it in my session, even though it was about copywriting. And Craig talked about it, and some of the other guys talked about it. It's, it's just you know test validity, finding out you know um, when you can trust your test results when you got solid data and that's that's really really a, a gray area for a lot of people right now and it, it used to be for me also until I made a conscious decision of really trying to find out you know uh, w w when you can actually trust the results you have and one of the big problems is that people just look at confidence level as the only factor as soon as you hit 95 percent confidence level people go Woohoo, we got a winner which mm -hmm. is definitely not the case uh, that's it's not the same as validity uh, confidence is one factor in determining validity, but it's not validity. You know, you need to look at uh, how long did you run the test for, how big was your sample size, what was the standard uh, deviation, what are the conversion rate ranges, what's the error margin, uh, you know, how big are your sample sizes, and how, how many conversions did you get, did you run it for a full business cycle. There's so many things you need to look into. And uh, once everybody starts, you know, getting a, a better understanding of, of validity, then that's going to change a lot because, um, yeah, I mean, some of the case studies I used to talk about, I mean, I'm just, I'm going to pull them. I'm not even talking about them anymore because they were five years ago and the data wasn't there. So I've, I've kind of been going through the stuff I want people to see. Uh, yeah. Now, at, at Digital Elite Camp, your talk was how to be a better conversion copywriter, actionable, mm -hmm. actionable insight from the trenches. What would yeah. be a couple of the top tips that uh, you talked about well, as, so actually, one of the first tests I, I showed was uh, was a was an example of really really bad split test. How not to run a split test, and I kind of I, I got people involved with the guessing on the different variants, and then you know there really was no difference, and I kind of followed up towards the end and tried to explain to them why it was a bad split test. And it wasn't a bad split test because I didn't get any any lift. It was because it was a stupid split test because I didn't have a hypothesis. I didn't know I was testing. I was using it as a toy, which is the completely wrong way to, to use split testing. So that was kind of one of the things I touched upon. But um, that was kind of set the frame. But but it was kind of a, it was a session I've never done before. It was kind of an unusual copywriting session because you kind of expect it to be something like, uh, you know, here's how to write a headline. Here's how to do this. Here's how to do that. But I was more kind of talking on a more fundamental level where some of the things I went through was, for example, that I always mentioned this and some people probably sick of hearing me say it, but one of my main points in optimization is that we're not optimizing websites or web copy, we're optimizing decisions. So that's the first thing you need to understand. What is the decision I want people to make? Okay? Uh, in order to be, to be clear about that, you need to know what your goals are. Okay? So, for example, uh, e-commerce, you might have a, you know, uh, there's, there's, there could be 10 steps from the, you know, from, for example, a subject line, and then you, you open the, the email, and then there's a newsletter, and then from the newsletter, you click onto a product overview page. From the product overview page, you click onto the product page. From the product page, you click to the basket, and then you go through three checkout steps, and then you go to payment, and then we have the money, and then we have a conversion. So that's a lot of decisions, and for every single step on in that funnel, people need to say yes to the next step. Okay. So one thing is just is focusing on making a sale, which is what we what you know people understand that. But there's so many small yeses along the way you need to optimize, and and that's also part of copywriting is understanding. Okay, so in a subject line, 
is that is the goal of the subject line really to sell the product, or is it just to sell an, a click? Is just to sell an open? And I'd say that's the, that's the, the the main goal of the of the subject line. So how do we write a better subject line that gets more people to open? And well, we're still honest, and we're not you know disappointing people. So that would be silly. You could might click here and get a million dollars, and then when people open the email, they're probably going to drop off. So understanding the whole context and getting few people the whole way through is. is is what conversion rate optimization is about. It's about, and that's what uh, copywriting is about also. So after that, you need to kind of find out, you know, uh, uh, yeah, another, so the next step is, is building a hypothesis. And one of the reasons why I spend a lot of time talking about hypotheses is that, you know, one of my, the main things in copywriting as well is that you need to, um, um, uh, you need to not guess, you need to hypothesize because, you know, guess is just a, a kind of a random statement based on no information at all. It's just kind of an observation on what you think the future might bring, whereas a hypothesis, you know, is a, is, is a, is a basic assumption that you base on limits of data, but it's kind of the, the, the starting point for further investigation. You know, so with a hypothesis, you try to put uh, cause and effect together. So you say, by changing this into this, we can make, we can, for example, reduce friction uh, and people get people to make this decision and thereby increase, you know, whatever goal we have. So start thinking of it that way. So instead of just guessing and going, ah, I like green, so everybody else likes green, and if I change it to green, everything will be better. Blah. You know, you actually say, you scrutinize that idea. Say, why? Why the hell would Green make more people make this decision and cause whatever conversion goal to happen rather than the red thing. You know, so really uh, be systematic in that way. And then uh, you know, the next thing is to, to you know get get collect data and get insight. You know, data in itself doesn't matter. We don't need to collect data for the sake of data. We need to turn it into actionable insight. And the better insight you have, the better your hypotheses will be, the better your treatments will be, and the more successful your tests will be. And then I also talked a little bit about different like easy techniques for kind of you know getting into that mindset and uh, and also I talked about you know one of the main points being that you test your hypotheses afterwards to find out whether they actually help water but not to go overboard on testing because testing can never be a toy or an excuse to not do your homework you know uh, testing should actually only be used when we have put in a lot of hard work, uh, you know, we've got a lot of data, we've built hypotheses on these hypotheses, we built treatments, and then we test them. What I used to do, which is completely wrong, was just to do as many split tests as possible, but that's just lazy, because then you just go like, you know, rah, <laughs> let's try this, let's try that, ah, and then there is no hypothesis, there's no process, there's no learning, it's just random stuff, and that's why I hate the multivariate testing, because, how, you know, it's just... In a lot of cases, that's just throwing you know a lot of stuff into a bag and shaking it, and put it together in all kinds of random ways, and then you're going like, oh, I wonder what's going to work. And again, that's that's not you know, <laughs> it's not a very clever way to work, in my opinion. And another thing I, I talked about in relation to copywriting was also just coming to terms with your role as a copywriter. What is you're doing, you know? And I, I showed like pictures of a slide of Don Draper. I was like, yeah, so you know. This guy is so awesome. He he knows the future. He knows stuff about your clients that they don't know. You know, and he, he doesn't need data because he can always write the right thing. And then I showed him like a picture of, for example, Shakespeare. Like, so this is another kind of type of uh, copywriting. You know, it's art. You know, it's just the, the wordsmith. You know, the small details and stuff. And then I I showed a picture of uh, uh, Doctor Evil because that's the way I thought I was. That's the way I thought of myself when I was straight out of you know marketing school. Uh, you know, I I read all the books. And I was like, yeah, man. I can, I can mess around with stuff in your brain. You don't even know what's there. I can press the cell button. Then I started split testing, and I found out that uh, I was actually more kind of a plumber. So I showed a picture of a plumber, you know, with his ass sticking out and stuff, fixing things. Because that's really what I spend my time as a copywriter doing: is fixing stuff. You know, either yeah. stuff that other people broke or stuff that <laughs> that was broken to begin with. You know, and so and that kind of ties into the whole idea of of putting together all the steps in the conversion funnel. That's what we're doing. You know, we're trying to fix the holes, the leakages on the way. And so I think that's kind of uh, an important thing is to kind of find out what, you, what kind of a copywriter you are. Because if, you, if you're into the whole art stuff and or you know, the Don Draper kind of thing only, this job is probably not for you. That doesn't mean that you have to be lame and everything you write is, is you know, you have to balance your, your analytical and, and artistic sides because if you only focus on one, you know, then you're going to lack the other. And if, mm -hmm. if you only focus on data, then your language is going to be lame and, you know, mechanical. So you, know, you also need the human element. You need to be creative, but you need to be creative about finding the right solution and not be creative in the sense that you just assume that the more crazy and creative we are on the messaging, the better it will be. So, yeah. Yeah, I think finding that right language is is definitely key because, you know, as 
we've done conversion for a long time. I've probably made just as many mistakes as you, if, if not more, for sure. But I think what I've learned, and you just explained this as well, is really understanding the right things to test. And that's why you create a hypothesis, is yep. really having a priority of what the biggest opportunities are and mm -hmm. ensuring you're testing the right thing. Because yeah. if, if you test a whole bunch of stuff, oh yeah, sure, you might get some results, but is it actually going to eventually move the bottom line? Mm. And understanding what that what that causation is, you can really fine-tune it as you dig through the, the data, create a hypothesis, and then try to validate that hypothesis. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. And also, uh, yeah, but understanding both the, the, the very small picture and the big picture, <laughs> because if you focus too much on, on either or, then you will not, you know, get the full uh, full effect. So in, in some cases, you know, you, and that's why you need to analyze also your funnels and stuff. Find out where, where's, you know, where's are you optimizing the right place? You know, you might be optimizing your your homepage when. Well, okay, let me give you an example. A lot of e-commerce sites I see they they spend t ridiculous amounts of money driving traffic. They spend a lot of money on their you know their overall design and stuff. And when when it comes to the checkout flow, it's just you know they don't care. And that's just insane because that's you know, that's the most crucial part of the whole website. It, it does not matter how many people you can get up to the checkout uh, point unless they go you know through through the checkout because that's the only way to get their money. Uh, you know, and and small lifts or just small changes can have huge impact in, 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 your, in your flow. Just um, uh, so that, that's that, that, so in those cases, you know, the right place to optimize, in my opinion, in my experience, is to start with with the end in mind and find out. So how do we make sure that all the traffic we get up to this point will actually, you know, take the last three steps that give us their money, instead of only focusing on the beginning and stuff mm -hmm. like that? It's uh, I think is very important, and that's what you're talking about. Also, is testing the right stuff in the right place. Uh, yeah, and and so I guess you know guys like me, uh, th there's also like a mix because then at some point you get a lot of experience. You start de developing kind of. Uh, uh, you know, maybe you've tested something 50 times with 50 different websites, and you know, you know that you know it, it usually works. So, so that way your your intuition tells you, hmm, this might be interesting. But then you find some data to see, not to to validate that you're right. That's that's not the right thing to do. You need to research whether there is actually you know something to be to be gotten by uh, by optimizing that one thing, and then you can you can move on. So, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, and um, you know, uh, moving on, we, we you also had the opportunity to visit New York City for the Web Optimization Summit. Can you tell people a little bit about that conference and maybe some takeaways? Yeah, that was that was great. I mean, I'm I'm a big fan of uh, Make Labs. I've learned so much from them. Uh, Dr. Flint is kind of a per personal idol of mine, and um, I've 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 been over there bothering them a lot. Uh, I was there for the first optimization summit in in '11, and then I sp I've spoken at. Two other optimization summits. I spoke at their email summit in Las Vegas, also, and but those were kind of smaller sessions. But this time, I was one of the keynotes, which was uh, it was actually a life goal of mine in, in 2011 when I attended the first one. I said, if if ever these guys invite me to do a keynote, then I'll know that I've you know, I've learned something, and, and you know I've, I actually have something to offer. <laughs> so that was huge, and it was held in the New York uh, Times, uh, you know, headquarters and uh, Times Square. So that was a huge experience, also, and. I mean, I, I love uh, MechLabs events, uh, the, and uh, the cool thing is every year it gets better. So they, they're really you know, like super optimizing their own events, also, which is really cool. They really listen to the feedback from the from the, from from the attendees. But uh, their sessions or their their summits are pretty cool because they have a good mix of of bringing in keynotes, like on a main track, and they have smaller tracks where, uh, for example, some of their clients or research partners, people they know out there who businesses who are doing their own optimization, they get invited in to present their case studies and their processes. So there's a lot of peer to peer stuff. And they have uh, you know roundtable sessions, which I think is really cool. It's, it's kind of like speed dating for marketers, where you know uh, different experts uh, sit down, and then you can you know you can join them at a table and, and have that kind of a discussion about what's going on. And uh, I had a couple of roundtable sessions this time. It was kind of on uh, on how to test content marketing, whether you know content can be tested. And and now I I know the mo most of the MechLabs guys uh, re pretty well, so. It's always such a pleasure, you know, the stuff that goes on after <laughs> the events, you know, dinners and parties and stuff. So that's just, you know, for me, that's one of the really cool things, you know, getting, again, getting to hang out with all these guys who, who, who spend their time doing what I also do, you know, and sharing experience. That's, that's just awesome. So the, the, the big contrast, I think, between kind of the MechLabs events is that they're more, 
like uh, summit, summit kind of events, you know, a little bit more corporate. And the thing about a, a PEPS event, which is so unique, is that you, you know, you go there and you're there for three days, but it's held out in the woods in Estonia. You know, the, last year it was in, in small cabins, and this year it's in a in a, like a spa hotel. But but you're away from civilization, so. You know, people are, everybody's there, all the speakers are there, all the attendees are there in the same place. So that kind of really, you know, creates a, a special vibe where you get to hang out and talk to people and, uh, you know, you, uh, you have dinner in the evening and, you know, the party's going on and stuff. So that's, that's yeah, that's one of the, the, the cool things about, about his events. So, but, but, I mean, Sherpa events and, and PEPS events, I, I recommend them to anyone who's interested in the in conversion stuff, no matter what level you're at, you're going to get something out of it because mm -hmm. maybe even if, if, if you know everything that's being presented in the sessions, you'll have the opportunity to talk to all these, you know, all these people that, that do the stuff for a living. Yeah, I mean, conferences are, are really so important because if, if you do want to connect with other people in your space and you want to, whatever, have a, a career in conversion or web design or copywriting, whatever it is, if you can align yourself and meet other people in your industry, and those relationships could last a really long time. And, yeah. and, just, and just because people are, you know, speaking at these, these big engagements doesn't mean that they're not approachable. You know, there's, there's no, no, no. to really connect with uh, a lot of um, some of the experts that you might admire online. Hell yeah, I'm I'm, I'm definitely I'm personally very <laughs> approachable. I think anyway. Now I have to be careful what I'm saying here, but I th I think my approach is kind of uh, I, I I said that in my opening uh, for, for 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 the session at Elite Camp also is that one of the cool things about this business being so young, this industry is that nobody has the nobody knows the eternal truth. Nobody has the answers. We're getting there. We're learning more and more. But you know, there's no one guru. And if there is one guy who says he knows it all, he's either you know. Unconsciously uh, incompetent or a big liar. Uh, so the most of the people that I like to hang out with are the people who kind of see this as a, as you know as an ongoing development, and that the more we help each other, the more we can share our knowledge. You know, the better. I learned a ton of stuff at this event. You know, so I think that those are some of the really you know, and, and guys like Craig Sullivan and Pep. You know, that's kind of you know they, they just say, share the same mentality. We're not there to kind of tell people what to do or to superstars or anything. We're there to learn just as much as the attendees and to share what we've learned. And I, th I think that's 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 the right way to think about it. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's what I enjoy about these, you know, a lot of these big conferences is that um, in most cases people are that's that's kind of the mindset, you know, and people are excited to be there and meet other other guys, you know, and and all of a sudden you're hanging out with you know guys from the UK and guys from the guys from Estonia and optimization guys from the states and optimization guys from Germany and from Sweden and from Denmark and from Holland and it's just yeah, it's, it's you learn you yeah, it's, it's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh, it's certainly a good time. I had a, a really good time when I met uh, a lot of the same speakers at the last conversion conference in, in March. And um, you know, if you are going to conversion conference this week, hello to to everybody. And um, let, let's let's close by t Michael telling people how they can find out more about you and anything else that you want to offer. Well, uh, I'd uh, I definitely recommend uh, you checking out uh, contentverb.com, my blog. I have been under ridiculous amounts of pressure for the last five months, so I, 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 I'm ashamed of myself for not having updated more regularly. So anybody who visits this, I know I haven't read it for a long time, and it will start happening now. Uh, there's a free ebook on there, also check it out. Uh, I mean, I, I, I do a lot of speaking. I'm, I'm yeah, I'm going to be at the Unbounds uh, conference in Canada. I'm going to be at Conversion Conference London, Conversion Conference Berlin. Uh, I, pro I think we're doing a gig in Holland also. I'm, I'm all over the place, so uh, if anybody ever wants to meet up and say hi, man, check me out at, um, at a conference, and uh, I'd love to hang out. <laughs> yeah, let, let's briefly tell people about Call to Action Conference. What's the dates on that? <sighs> Well, here I'm, I'm showing how unorganized I am because I can't remember. It's September. It's in the beginning of September. Let's see. Uh, September 12th, Vancouver, Canada. Yes, yes well, exactly. Calltoactionconf.com. Yeah, so that's going to be a lot of fun. I mean, uh, uh, Pep is going to be there. Brian Massey is going to be there. Uh, Oli. Uh, 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 yeah, a, a ton of a cool speakers. can't remember them all now. Uh, 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 and, and I'm not even sure, I don't think they have the full program yet. I just know that I'm going to be on a live optimization panel with uh, Oli. And uh, both Oli and I have, uh, you know, hyperactive disorder. So expect, uh, expect 
ship to go down. And if, if you do submit one of your landing pages, be ready for it to be uh, probably ripped apart, but you know, in a constructive fashion. But we're probably going to be <laughs> pretty straight up with, uh, with our criticism. Nice. I need to check my schedule, see if I can uh, make it up to Vancouver. Beautiful city, and I would love to, to hang out with a lot of those guys, and you as well. Yeah, man. I've, I've never been there before, so that would be great. Yeah, I'd love to hang out. It would be awesome. Cool, man. Well, thanks a lot for your time. I think this has uh, been really good. It's uh, it's good to see um, you know people worldwide really connecting in, yeah. in this, this little niche industry that we've been doing for so many years now. Totally. Thanks for having me on, man. It's always a pleasure, Alex. Cool. Thank you. Thanks, Michael.